start off with tonight, all you really have to do is just get a good night's sleep. So of the materials that are on your head right now, the soaks that we put on, take those off when you get home. And then the headband that goes around the sutures, leave that on tonight and take that off in the morning before your hair wash, just to hold some pressure on the sutures. Okay. For the first four or five nights, you want to sleep on your back and a little bit inclined. So maybe at least a couple pillows underneath your head so your head's higher than your heart while you're asleep. You can use a recliner too, if you have one of those that works really, really well. Uh, if it's a little difficult to sleep on your back without rolling over in your sleep, the more you can prop yourself up, the better. Mm -hmm. It'll make you less inclined to do that in your sleep. Also, if you have one of those airline pillows that wraps around your neck, those work really well. It also makes it a little bit more comfortable for your, sur your sutures in terms of the pressure that's on them while you sleep. Okay. Just for comfort level. It won't hurt your sutures though. If you don't have one of those, you can just roll up a towel and wrap that around your neck. That works really well, too. kind of stabilizes it as well when you sleep. Okay. So in between when the soaks come off and when you go to bed tonight, you want to make sure to start spraying your grafts. This little bottle right here with that copper peptide is going to be your best friend for about six or seven days, mm -hmm. give or take a day or two. Every hour that you're awake, you want to spray your grafts. Okay. About between four and eight sprays just to give them a nice little misting to keep them moist. Okay. Main thing, you just don't want them to dry out. Okay. So starting tomorrow morning is your first hair wash. For the first three days, you're going to wash your hair twice a day, once in the morning and once at night. And for the first five days, you don't want any water pressure directly onto your grafts. You can still take a shower, just make sure that you don't have your head right under the direct spray. Okay. I'll give you a stack of this lovely gauze to go home with you. So. This is going to be a barrier between your grafts and everything else during your hair washes. When you go in to wash your hair, take a cup into the shower with you. Open up a couple of these, two or three. Lay them on so that they cover up your grafts. Doesn't matter how it goes. Then pour a cup of water over top to get everything really nice and wet. From there, take some of your shampoo from your kit, lather it up in your hands first, and then gently press it right through the gauze. You can do pressure, that's fine as long as it's straight up and down. The one thing you don't want to do is rub back and forth. That's going to take the grafts right out. Okay. Straight up and down is fine. Enough pressure to be able to get the shampoo through the gauze. Same shampoo, using your fingertips, massage it right in back into the sutures. You can massage back there, that's fine. They're going to stay closed. But you want to keep that area as clean as you can. No scabs, anything like that from forming or lingering in the back. The cleaner you keep them, the more comfortable it's going to be as they heal and have less inflammation, less chance for infection, any itching, things like that. It'll also be a lot easier to take them out when that comes time. Okay. After it's all shampooed, use a cup of water, pour everything over top, get it all nice and clean, and peel the gauze off. And that's it for the actual washing part. After that, take some of this in gel right here, which has the copper peptide in it, just a thin layer of that on the sutures in the back. You want to put this on after each time you wash your sutures until they come out in 10 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. If you run out of this stuff before then, switch over to Neosporin or some other type of an antibiotic ointment. That'll help control some of the itching too. Okay. After that's on, you'll open up one of these packets that are labeled for when to use them, morning and night for the next three days. Then, as I showed you earlier, you squeeze out just a little bit of the excess from there so they're not dripping all over the place. You still want them blue though. Then open them up, leave them closed, however you need to do it to cover up the grafts. Mm -hmm. Then leave them on for about 30 to 45 minutes and take them off. After that, continue using your spray. Okay. Any questions about that particular portion of the hair wash? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead. Starting on day six, you can go back up to regular water pressure in your grafts. So at that time, you can also start to massage the grafts while you wash. There's little tiny crusts that form where the grafts are and that's at that point that's when those are going to start to come off. You don't want to pick them off but eventually they will just kind of lift up and come off on their own. Starting day six as well you want to begin to use your conditioner. That helps soften those crusts up a little bit to help speed up that particular part of the process but you do not want to use that before day six because it's way too thick to rinse out just by pouring water over top. Otherwise, okay. you're just going to wind up with a bunch of blue goop in your hair. Okay. okay, so when you are back up to regular water pressure, you can massage a little bit with the pads of your fingers, the shampoo and the conditioner. 
into your hair and then rinse it right out underneath the shower head. You don't want to use any scratching or any nails until all those little crusts are gone. And those will pretty much all be gone by the time your sutures come out, 10 to 14 days afterwards, depending on how much you massage okay. beginning on day six. So do still continue to apply some type of ointment if it's the Iman gel from your kit or Neosporin to your sutures up until they do come out though. So next little stage is kind of your general do's and don'ts. So you want to avoid any really strenuous physical activity over the next five to seven days, anything that's going to raise your blood pressure or work up a sweat. The reason for that is because of swelling, especially with those grafts filling up the front there. We want to be aware of any inflammation that's going to start there and come down your forehead to around the eyes. That's where it would be a problem. It's not going to damage anything, but it is rather irritating and makes you look a little reminiscent of Frankenstein. Okay. So the more you can avoid anything that's going to work your blood pressure up, the better. Also making sure you sleep on your back, a little bit inclined, and try not to do too much bending over if you can. So if you need to pick up something from the ground, bend down with your knees and keep your head elevated. Mm -hmm. Another thing to do is a little bit of ice on the forehead, 10-15 minute increments here and there over the next few days. Make sure the ice is right on the brows though. You don't want to get too close to the hairs because any extreme temperatures hot or cold on the grafts is a little bit too much of a shock to their system. Okay. So keep them clear of that. But the best trick for swelling, and the main thing for swelling is preventative measures. So start this tomorrow once your headband comes off, is a little fluid pulling technique on the forehead, just a forehead massage. So keeping your fingers together, apply some pressure right to the middle of your forehead and then drag your fingers out to the side over the ears. And if you follow your eyebrows with your ring finger and you keep your fingers together, you'll stay quite clear of those grafts on the front. So you won't have to worry about accidentally brushing one. Okay. Just do that whenever you think about it. Mm -hmm. And I actually recommend doing that every single time you spray your grafts. That way you stay really on top of it. Just a few pulls every hour whenever you spray. Okay. In terms of pain control, I recommend staying on a regular schedule with your pain medication for the next few days. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just a couple ibuprofen, you want to go ahead and take something every four to six hours. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not feeling anything when you do to take it. It's way easier to stay ahead of it and anticipate it than to try and play catch up, just like with the swelling. Mm -hmm. So tonight before you go to bed, get a nice meal in your stomach and then take one of your pain pills and one of your sleeping pills and get, some, get a really good night's sleep. And then in the morning, after you have some breakfast, if you're not going to be driving anywhere, take one of your pain pills. If you are going to be doing any driving, stick to ibuprofen or, or something like that, the non-narcotic. Just always make sure you have food in your stomach first before you take those, otherwise you can get a little bit nauseous okay. from it. So also in your kit, I have a couple little goodies to go home with you. I have a couple of these waterproof pillowcases to use tonight and tomorrow night. You might get a little bit of oozing out of your sutures, and that's normal a little bit of spotting for the first couple of nights. And the other part that I've got is some of these blue and white pads that we've been using throughout the day. The white side's water, uh, very, very absorbent and the blue side's waterproof. Okay. So you can use those as well. One other thing I would like to give you a heads up about, when those little crusts begin to come off, mm -hmm. and it tends to worry people if they don't know what's going on, a lot of times you're going to see what looks like a hair above and below that crust when it comes out, but I want to promise you that's not the actual graft that you're losing. It's just the shaft of the hair that's being shed, but the bulb itself from the transplanted hair is still down in there and will produce a hair. Okay. Usually it takes around three months for it to get up to the surface, so it takes a little while, but it will get there. Okay. You'll know if you've lost a graft because it, it will be accompanied by a fair amount of blood since the scalp is so vascular, but as long as those crusts come out, with the hair and there's no blood with it, then that's totally fine. You're not losing a graft at that point. Okay? And that's pretty much all I've got for you. All right, just uh, don't hesitate to call us, obviously. You got the doc's cell phone number. It is down here on the sheet as well, so use that if you need to, even if it's just for clarifications. Okay? Okay?